منور السلام عليكم ازيك يا سامر طب يا اخي تعالى زورنا يا اخي مرة واحدة مرة واحدة في الشهر في السنة ما يصحش كده المسجد مفتوح كل يوم والامام قاعد هنا طب شكرا على الحضور على اي حال وعليكم <تصفيق> السلام ورحمة الله هاو از ايفربادي بسم الله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها فان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وانما توعدون لات وما انتم بمعجزين اجريت اول وزجريتين في الاسلام السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Praise the peace and the blessing of Almighty Allah be with you all. I would like to welcome you all for continuation of our series, Al-Kaba'ir, which means the major sins in Islam. And inshallah, if I'm not mistaken, let me be sure if I look here yes this is going to be segment number 38 under the title of major sins in al-islam major sins mean a haram act haram forbidden activity that Allah didn't allow it uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Muslims have to do their best as much as they can to avoid it so they can achieve Allah's forgiveness and His mercy. Today we're talking about respecting other people's life and basically we have one hadith only to talk about it but the subject is great and big it's very important let's deal with the hadith the hadith in the collection of Imam Muslim rahmatullah alayhi that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying man ashara إلى أخيه بحديدة فإن الملائكة تلعنه حتى ينتهي وإن كان أخاه من أمه وأبيه وزا حديث السين سين هو سو أفور بوين تو هز مسلم برادر with a, a metal the angels of Allah will send a curse on him until he stop from such action even if the person that he point the sharp edge towards him is his own blood brother from his own 
mother and his own father. This basically what we talking about is hadith short, very short, one line, less than one line. But it's very, very important to understand and not only to understand and to memorize the hadith, but live the hadith, reflect on this hadith. This hadith talking about the curse and who making the dua, the angels. The angels will be making dua against you. If you point any sharp edge towards your Muslim brother, doesn't matter what you, if you're joking or you're serious. About joking, first let's say what is sharp edge. Can be a knife, can be a screwdriver, can be a gun, it can be anything that it can harm him or maybe eventually can kill him. A sword, screwdriver, a bucket knife, a arrow, uh, anything that you may use it as a webbing towards somebody. We have to remember that we Muslims, we did not solve our problems with our fists and our hands. There is means and ways about going solving whatever problems that exist. There is a way we can talk. There is a way that we can go to arbitration, that we can go to respected people in the community and ask them to get involved. There is a court. There is a day of judgment. If you believe in the day of judgment, you could not get your right. You can make dua against him. But there is nothing that this person that you point sharp edge towards him worthy of taking his life. Say, I'm not really going to take, kill him, but I'm scaring him. But how do you know that is not going to escalate and get to a point that you're going to stab him? Don't, don't play with fire. Do not get yourself in a position that you will regret all your life. So the Prophet وسلم, say only to point, okay, sharp edge towards your Muslim brother, a brother or a sister, or a sister towards a sister, or a sister towards a brother or a husband towards a wife, or wife towards a husband. We hear about crazy stuff. Allah is telling us in Quran, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً The believer are nothing except by being brothers. We are family. How we can do this? We have to understand the seriousness of the matter. There is nothing to justify for you to attempt to kill somebody. Because you don't know how is your temper after you start talk, he start to talk, you point something, he points something, and okay? So we don't put ourselves in a position that we found a bloodshed on the ground. And after this we regret, it's too late. Because money, because a woman, because misunderstanding, because somebody tried to bring about misunderstanding between you and your Muslim brother, If we really believe in the day of judgment, we are not going to be doing any of these things because we know we're going to be resurrected, we're going to be questioned about these things. And this also will apply 
to people who are in army. I'm telling you. Because you don't know what the information being given to you about such a country is true or not. There is a lot of games nowadays between politicians and countries and all kind of things. So why you put yourself in a position that you're going to be having a blood in your hand and you don't know? You don't tell me, oh, I've been given the order to kill. This is not right. But the first order is the order of Allah. Allah is telling us, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't kill yourself. That means Allah telling you that your brother, when you kill him, as if he killing yourself. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ You understand? When you're killing somebody as if you're killing yourself, you're doing something very serious. So going voluntarily in the army, and you know can be a possibility, can be a war between another country or another state or another, another. Don't, don't get into this. If you got nothing except piece of bread, peanut butter sandwich and jelly and eat it, is much better than this money that you're going to be making because you are in the army. Because when you get an order, fight, fight, shoot, shoot, you're not going to ask, oh, why I'm going to such a country? Why I'm shooting? It's too late. So for you to enter armies nowadays, that you gambling with your life. You are gambling with your real future, which is Jannah and Paradise. So Allah said, don't kill yourself. How? How I kill myself? Because when you kill your Muslim brother or sister, as if you're killing your own self. So the Prophet ﷺ saying, whosoever point a sharp edge towards his Muslim brother, What's going to happen? فَإِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَةَ الْعَنُهُ Indeed, the angels of Allah be putting cursing in him. The curse will be upon such a person who does this. Until he stops this action, until he puts this knife or this gun or this machine gun, or whatever it is that sharp that can kill somebody, doesn't matter who this person, even if he's your own blood brother from your own mother, your own father. We could not, because money, because anything. And let's assume, let's assume, as we understand taking somebody's life, even if it's non-Muslim, even if it's non-Muslims. Don't tell me, oh, he's not Muslim. So who gave you the right that you go and kill non-Muslims? You are not the authority. You are not the king. You are not the Khalifa. You are not the, the head of the state. So do not find excuses. Oh, he's a kafir. He's kafir, he's kafir between him and Allah. Even if he deserves to be killed, it's not for you to kill him. There is government, there is court, there is people in charge. They can work with this. Stay away from hellfire as much as you can. Do not, do not. Some people, because they're going to put stars on their shoulder, metal, they're going to be a big rank, okay? You go in the army, some people because they have this what you call, uh, I forgot what this term is that, uh, gang members, okay, this is my, this is my people, this is my gang, okay, so whatever they do, I do it, okay, you don't see this sign and you show your neck and you have the sign here or in, in your arm, 
So whatever these people, they do a do it. They kill, they kill, they steal, I steal. Your total submission and your true pledge is with Allah before anybody else. Nobody else feed you, nobody else give you life, nobody else give you the air to breathe other than Allah. So if you are not going to put the term Allahu Akbar in action, you are a loser. Allahu Akbar greater than anyone and anything. So if Allah said to you kill, now you can kill. Where is this Allah say you can kill? Where? And even if somebody deserves to be killed, it's not your job to kill. The blood of a Muslim is lawful with exception of three cases. That he kills somebody, he be killed. A person commit adultery, fornication, and he was married or is married, now he can be killed. A person who left the Islam can be killed. But who is going to kill him? Not me, not you. There is a court, there is a system, there is a police, there is a government, there is a president, there is a sheikh, there is maulana. Those are the people who are in charge. You could not take the law in your hand. You have to respect the law of Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put some people in charge. As he say, الَّذِينَ إِمَّا كَنَّهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاءَ وَأَمَرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَهُوا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ So there is people in charge. Do not take the law in your hand. Focus in your own self. Life of Muslims is sacred. As the Prophet ﷺ had told us in the final Hajj and the farewell Tawaf, he told us that أَمْوَالَكُمْ أَوْلَادَكُمْ إن دماءكم وأعراضكم وأموالكم عليكم حرام كحرمة يومكم هذا في شهركم هذا في بلدكم هذا everything is secret same way like the Kaaba is secret the Kaaba is secret you have to understand this so even if Allah given a green light that somebody to be killed is not me is not you that kill this person there is a government there is a law there is a, there is a rules that Allah had bought it and we have to follow these rules. Okay? So do not exchange Jannah to hellfire. Do not take such a step. Get damage your future. Because your future is the Jannah. Your future is not to be a doctor in engineering. Nothing wrong to be a doctor or engineering, but the real future because this, this thing is temporary for a month, for a year, for 10 years. And after this, you're going to die. And after this, what's going to happen when you die? And now you have a blood in your hand. Nowadays, you see Muslims killing Muslims. Muslims are killing Muslims. Okay? Where is this in Islam? Where? Where is this in Islam? You're killing... Oh, I, I got the order. What order? Who? Allahu Akbar or the President Akbar? Allahu Akbar or the King Akbar? Which one is Akbar in your life? So you don't know what Allahu Akbar mean. You're only repeating words. So, in al-hukmu illa lillah, amara Allah ta'abudu illa iya, thalika al-deen al-qayim. Ruling is belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had commands that you worship none other than him. Don't put anybody before Allah. This is the true religion. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, we have to understand again the seriousness of this matter and this one of the major sins called Al-Kaba'ir. And we have to avoid it to the best of our ability. And listen, look at the two sons of Adam. When he said, I'm going to kill you, he didn't do anything wrong. What did he say to you? No, I'm going to kill you before you kill me. He said, لَإِنْ بَسَطَّ يَدَكَ لَيَّةِ لَقْتُلَنِيمْ مَا أَنَا بِقَاتِلُ 
if you stretch your hand towards me to kill me, I'm not going to do this. Why? Inni Allah. Because I'm scared from Allah. I'm not going to do this. Okay? You're going to kill me? Alright. This is between you and Allah. But in the same time, what about a person defending his property? Yes, now if somebody transgress against you, because the Prophet ﷺ had told us that man mata duna mali fawa shaheed. Man mata duna irdi fawa shaheed. Okay? A person who die as a result defending his honor, defending his property, he is a martyr. But listen carefully. If you can defend yourself and your property without killing the person, do it. So now somebody come and surprise me. Okay? And break my door and get to my house. And now he's going to take my property. And I don't want him to get my property. So if I can this function his transgression by shooting him in the foot why i'm going to shoot him in the head you see if i can shoot his hand that he holding the gun this is the right thing but if there is no choice except that you shoot him to kill him and this is the only way you can save your property and your honor now this is something different but never ever be the person to start but Islam doesn't tell you that you have to say, hey, go ahead, kill me. I'm ready for you. Don't do this. Do not do this. So you have the right to defend yourself. You have the right to defend your honor. Okay? But never ever be a transgressor or a start or even take a, a chance that you can be a person who carrying blood in his hand in the day of judgment. So do not, even if you're joking, even if you're joking, do not take any sharp edge and point it to somebody. There is possibility the shaitan can snatch it from your hand and make you hurt your Muslim brother. Remember, the Muslims are your brothers. Remember, we are one single family doesn't matter what is our color what is our nationality what is your, our language all of us testify to la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah so the blood of the muslim is sacred and the honor of the muslim is sacred and the property of the muslims is sacred do not transgress may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from all this haram things keep our hand clean until we die so when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we meet Allah with no drop of blood unlawful came on our hand with this I thank you for being here today if anybody have any comments question or correction تصحيح أو تصفيح مرحبا منكم نستفيد هلة الأنوار السلام عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته so إن شاء الله with this we come to a conclusion to our segment for today and I may see you again at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time إن شاء الله if we have the class about hadith for the hadith for Islamic school. If not, I will see you tomorrow morning, inshallah, at the 5.45 a.m. Thank you for watching. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, nashadu la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka, and Allah knows best. Yes, Akhi Yusuf. I'm going to me. It's okay. Oh, it's broadcasting. I'll give you a, give me a minute. Inshallah, I'll be with you.